Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow 33 bringing you a match between Anarchid and Lord Muff on Ravaged. Now, this is a map that is. We've seen it a little while before, but it's kind of StarCrafty. Got the ramps, got a lot of ramps, got choke point heavy setup. It's not a particularly Total Annihilation style map, a lot of cliffs. Although I do like it because it's very familiar to me, being that I basically started playing RTS games from StarCraft. So. I do quite like this map. Anyway, Lord Muff starting out with spiders, which are quite powerful on this map due to the cliffs. And Anarchid starting with Cloaky Bots. Anarchid in the north southwest corner of the map. Lord Muff in the northeast corner of the map. And Lord Muff, as far as I know, has kind of been on a bit of a hiatus. He's actually one of the major artists for this game, or at least one of the people called upon to do some of the art. And apparently he's been rather busy, but he was working on some stuff for improving some of the art assets in the game. Not sure how he plays, but we'll find out. Anarchy, on the other hand, is a very experienced player, and he's... Well, he's going for Cloakies, which is kind of standard. I'm a little bit surprised that Lord Muff is going for Spiders. Now, this map, like I said, because of the cliffs, you do have a lot of opportunities to put Spiders in ambush locations, but the cliffs are kind of few and far between. It's difficult to do that. The one thing I actually have seen done, which is why this map isn't great for vehicles, is terraforming part of the choke points that only spiders can get through. That's happened to me, against me, I should say, once. And I learned my lesson that vehicles are not necessarily the best option. Spiders are fairly powerful here. We'll see how Lord Muff does with those. He is going for fairly quick venoms. He does have a few fleas scouting around the map. And he does have... I mean, both players start with four metal extractors in their base, as opposed to the usual three, which is quite a lot. And Anarchid, however, using the Rector to take most of the metal extractors here, he's expanding, rather, with his commander, very quickly expanding. Lord Muff, on the other hand, focusing more, almost completely, on his main base rather than focusing on expansion of his own. And Anarchid getting a nice little lo lotus right around. Oops, that's not the key. This is the key. Getting the lotus right around these metal extractors, and another one right at the ramp. Nice lotus placement. Admittedly, a clever spider could come along this backside, and it would be just out of range of the metal extractor, and definitely could get to the rector. But it doesn't look like Lord Muff is planning on doing that, and he doesn't. He's probably not aware that that's the case, that Anarchy is likely to do that. So it's not something that's going to be coming up, I would imagine. And a scythe? What the? A scythe? Okay, Anarchid, I think, is playing on a bit of a handicap, because you never start with scythe. You see them occasionally used for stealth operations, getting rid of dominatrices, or getting rid of fusion plants, or other high-priority targets like that. But at the beginning of the game, he doesn't even know what Lord Muff is up to, and he's probably not going to be up to heavy tanks. So this scythe actually looks like it... No, it's not going to be decloaked by that flea. That is kind of close, though. No, the flea is not spotting that scythe. That scythe is getting through. Well, let's see what it managed to kill anything. Probably not. The two venoms should be able to stun it before it deals a major amount of damage. Scythe only deals 200 damage a shot. And then venoms having 750 health, that is going to take four hits. But the scythe, it's going for the venom. It's getting stunned, and it's dead. Yeah, I... I don't know what Anarchid was thinking. I, I think he is kind of handicapping himself a little bit. Just because he does know he is a bit more experienced than Lord... Okay, 600 elo difference. But I try not to point that out too much because, well... Who knows? Lord Muff might actually pull out something. It could be interesting. Don't want to ruin the suspense. Lord Muff, however, is focused very heavily on getting his economy going. And it's actually a pretty common structure you see on this particular map is the wind generators lining up in between the metal extractors. Most of the time you just see wind generators or solar plants placed around the metal extractors, but this map I notice very often you'll see players do this structure, where it's one big, because the way the overdrive system works, if energy near metal extractors, the metal extractors, and you have energy surplus, the metal extractors work harder to get more metal. So it's very common in Ravage for this to be done in such a way that it does go around, and Anarchid putting a rector right by Lord Muff's base, he's fully aware now what Lord Muff is doing. Weird place to put it. I mean, he does have line of sight into Lord Muff's base, but Lord Muff can't really deal with that. Anyway, yeah, so when you have all this power near your metal extractors, it does power them up, and with all the connected power here, that is pushing the metal, or will be pushing the metal extractors a fair amount once Lord Muff gets a metal, or gets an energy surplus. Right now, he doesn't have energy surplus, but once he gets that, it'll work. And he is also starting to move out a bit, getting some hermits, getting an expansion going towards the north, and Anakin, on the other hand, has pretty much doubled his income. Just by expanding along the south side of the map, Lord Muff nowhere near as fast in his expansion attempts. And I'm a bit surprised he hasn't been using more fleas. He hasn't... 
You don't expect to build up 10 fleas and place them everywhere your opponent might expand. Place them over here, place them over here, over here. I'm going to mental map mode. So you can place them here and here, maybe in this section as well. Place them on the center, just get them through. The thing is, if you lose your fleas, it's not a big deal. You know what your opponent is up to. I mean, they know that you know, but you still know, and that's huge. But Lord Muff does, however, apparently have radar, because, yes, he does have radar. He has radar view of what Anarchid's commander is up to, and he is sending in units to deal with that, but not anything that actually can deal with it. The spiders are not anywhere near powerful enough. No real spider. Crabs maybe can get through this, but the Venoms and Hermits that are being pushed in right now cannot. Actually, Recluses are also a good option because they can just attack from a distance. But certainly one Venom and two Hermits will not have a chance, and Anarchid... Very heavily focused on defense. I'm actually a little bit surprised how heavily he is focused on defense in this particular case. But, yeah, that's what he's focused on, is very heavy defense. A little bit unusual. And now he does have Laser Tower here, knowing that Lord Muff is going for spiders. He does have a Laser Tower in the back, just in case something comes up. As we can see, Lord Muff's power is actually paying off. His metal, he is getting about one and a half times as much metal as he would be otherwise. And Anarchid losing another Scythe. But a bunch of Rockos coming in to support, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Those Rockos actually are going to have a hard time dealing with this. But they should be able to... There's enough of a numbers advantage. It shouldn't matter a great deal. Should be able to just saturate the damage enough. I'm still just surprised that Anarchy is going for Scythe. So that must be just to give Lord Muff a chance. Mind you, he's doing it at the same time that he's expanding so aggressively that Lord Muff basically only has about a fifth... No. Only has a fifth of the map he could possibly take, and it's only taken about a tenth of it. At this point... I'm not sure what Lord Muff has up his sleeve. Enough Venoms, he could just stun anything that Anarchid throws at him, but it's also a question of making sure that he's able to harass out everything that Anarchid even has. And that Scythe got a nice set of good hits in. The Hermit, however, does have high enough health that it can just deal with that. Don't have to worry about it. And here comes a probably a fairly large battle. It's not going to be the biggest battle of this match, but it is going to be a fairly important one. It looks like Lord Muff will be able to push through Anarchid's defense line. Yeah, these Rockers are dead. They're moving back. The only way they're going to survive is that they move back. And a Scythe coming in along the side to flank. And that Scythe is actually probably going to get spotted before anything happens. Two of the Rockos are getting stunned out. And the Scythe getting spotted and also stunned out. Able to deal some damage in the process, though. Actually able to nearly kill a Venom in the process. But unfortunately for Anarchid, all of his forces lost to the Venoms, but that's not a big deal. Anarchid right now has so many forces coming in, he can... he doesn't even have... Wait, why does he not have something supporting this factory here? He doesn't have another factory, he has some construction going on on the side, but he basically has a lot of metal income and not a whole lot of spending. He is building... oh, here we are, that's what is going on. Missed that air factory at the south, getting some napalm bombers, and that will pretty much turn this right around. Especially with the Sherman Sherman Rockos he has, he must have been supporting that earlier. And there's the Caretaker. Okay, that answers the question. He is definitely pushing this Cloakybot factory enough. While Lord Muff does have a Caretaker of his own, so both players are definitely being quite wise, making sure to use all the resources. Lord Muff using more of his resources, but Anarchy just has more resources. So, in his case, two... Well, not quite two caretaker up buildings yet, but soon to be two caretaker buildings. Still won't do it. And the Napalm Bomber, or the Phoenix, I should say, because it's the name. Go by name, not description. Generally kind of flav more flavorful that way. But anyway, the Phoenix able to not deal that much damage. It's actually didn't do too much. Another Phoenix, however, coming in and not dropping his bombs here. It is going further into Lord Mouse base, actually going straight for his new expansion, his commander. And that Phoenix will probably go down to the... No, the laser star is not quite close enough to deal with it. And that's a lot of damage being dealt. Well, the spider's coming in the main base and we see that the Hermits are not able to deal with it. Yeah, that was a bad idea. The Hermits are not quite able to deal with the defenses completely, but able to deal with them enough that they can deal some harassment in. Actually, at this point, they're in a really great spot. They... I retract my earlier comments. They're actually in a great spot. The only downside is the rate of fire. The only thing that's holding them back right now is that they aren't firing as quickly as they could be. But still, that is pretty huge. Now, Lord Muff is actually dealing quite a bit of damage. He's dropping down Anarchist's power for structure quite a lot. And Wind Farm... Every... Wow! I don't think I've ever seen a 1v1 wind farm collapse like that. Should be noted that wind farms do have a slight explosion radius, and as you can see, it's just enough that they can actually kill each other if they're too close. And that's what we just saw, was Anarchid losing all of his wind generators, but he's getting a fusion generator in place. Kind of risky, fusion generators have a pretty big explosion when they are killed. But he's assuming Lord Muff will not be able to kill him, and that's actually not an unsafe assumption. Though admittedly, he is starting to have to deal with... 
well, the defenders is... It's a lot more units coming by Lord Muff. He is still pushing in fairly powerfully. Scythes are doing a great job, however, going around the side. Anarchid doing a great job just harassing around and doesn't have a whole lot of defenses. I should say, doesn't have a whole lot of all offense. A lot of defense, though. Anarchid's going very heavily for defense. I'm not entirely sure why. It is working out, but it's still an odd choice. Admittedly, he does have so much money, it doesn't matter much at this point, but still, it's a bit of a bizarre choice. And Lord Muff is moving through with his Hermits. He won't be able to win this fight, as is pretty clear. They are doing what they can, but the Stinger alone is too much for them, let alone with the Lotus is helping out. So those Hermits not doing enough. And Lord Muff's commander, more of, actually, a, more of a combat commander. Personal shield and auto repair system, so it's definitely a bit of a harder commander to get through. But even with that, Anarchid is just outproducing Lord Muff. Like I said, two factories to one producing double time. And Lord Muff doesn't have the metal to actually keep his factory producing properly double time. Only 14 metal. He has some reclaim targets, and he looks like he is going for that. Lord Muff making sure that he can reclaim back up so he doesn't have to worry too much about losing anything. But these don't reclaim for that much. The Rocco is his best bet, and that is helping out a little bit. But it's still not great. And Anarchid has such complete map control right now. It's complete, complete and total map control. That is huge. And Anarchid basically has this game in the bag. I was wondering if Lord Muff would be able to have some way to come back from this. And he might still. Uh, it's, it's tough for him to get back from this position, however. His economy is falling apart. His rec The reclaim is his best bet. But even then, he doesn't have any static economy going in. And the scythe is just around here, ready to take out anything whenever it wants to. Now, Anarchid continuing to attack with the Phoenixes, or Phoenixes, Phoenixes, and he is actually not picking great targets. He really sh he could have gone for this base and just dealt with the factory right away. I mean, he would have lost the Phoenix, but two or three Phoenixes. He has so many Phoenixes and Shadows in his base, he's not even focused on, or he's just now focused on this. His cursor just getting to it, selecting all the Shadows, but for some reason, going straight for the Commander instead of going for the base and the factory. Because if he gets rid of this factory, Lord Muff is done. If he gets rid of the commander, it's a mild annoyance. I mean, it's it's a pain in the butt, but that commander, if it dies, not a big deal. I mean, it's a bit of a deal because that is where he's getting a lot of his reclaim from, but it's still not the biggest deal in the world. But getting rid of this factory, that would just do him in. Because the reclaim is the only big thing, and actually more static economy is being built. This weaver is... Possibly going to find the scythe. Anarchid not focused on that at all. Anarchid instead focused entirely on this scythe over here. And he's making sure that this attack comes in. And going for the kill. This is it. This is the end of the game. Anarchid coming in. He is going for the commander first. Trying to take that out first. But the scythe able to get rid of the weaver. Able to get rid of the metal extractors. Able to get rid of everything. And Anarchid is just about to win. This is game. And Anarchid even moving his commander in. And his commander only in level 1 compared to Lord Muffs at level 3. But... Really, commanders don't matter all that much, especially with this many units in the game. And the Scythe to finish it off, and I think Lord Muff will probably throw in the towel once his commander is dead. We shall find out, however, although the death of his commander heavily damaging some of his Venoms, and that was a lot of money that got damaged there. Anarchid lose, losing his commander as well, so it's a little bit evened out, but Anarchid was not relying on it anywhere near as much. Though, that being said, Lord Muff wasn't either, but he invested a lot of money in it that could have gone towards spiders. And that wasn't the case. Shadows continue to come in, get rid of the units, and I think the next pass will be to get rid of this factory and seal the game. Now, Tarantulas probably should have been built sooner. They are the anti-air spider. Lord Muff could have built them a lot sooner than he had. And Anarchid just finishing up. I'm surprised he's cleaning up as slowly as he is. I think he has been this entire game going for a bit of a self-handicap. Not too much, but a little bit. And... Okay, you've got to be kidding me! A, a nuke silo in a 1v1 game? A Seriously, Anarchid? This is going to be seven minutes before it becomes useful. He's going to win the game before... I think actually he's going to be... I think that's why he's toying with Lord Muff, is that he wants to get this strategic nuke silo built up and just cherry tap Lord Muff, blow up his entire main base, keep him contained in the meantime, and just fire a nuke... Oh, man. I... Okay, Anarchid, that's just mean. If you're watching this, that is mean and unnecessary. I mean, I was playing against a new player the other day, and... I didn't go this far, even though I did turtle quite a lot, and that's why I was actually bringing up turtling quite a lot earlier, was because 
it is important to bear in mind that turtling is not a good idea in general, though Anarchid was so far ahead in this game it didn't matter. But seriously, I didn't even go for the silencer. I just went for the attack nuke silo because it's the easiest way to get rid of the defenses, but that was because it was the fastest option, not because it was the flashiest option. Ugh, I I just don't even. I just don't even. Anarchid, I don't know what's up. But it looks like he might no, he's just going for Katane. He doesn't appear to be going for the kill at all. He's entirely going for just this nuke silo. That's it. And Lord Muff slowly building units, but he doesn't really have a chance. Unfortunately for him, spiders don't have anything like roaches or ticks, any sort of kamikaze, kamikaze unit that effectively acts as a comeback device. Because if he had a roach or a tick, he could blow up this... He could just get rid of this mass of units right now. And that would help quite a lot. Not completely, but Anarchid focusing heavily on the silencer, it would definitely start to turn the game around. It would give Lord Muff an opening. Admittedly, it would have been useful about five minutes ago, but Lord Muff never decided to actually do a switch. Any sort of switch over to... Okay, never mind. Anarchid looks like he's going for the kill, but he never decided... No, he's still going for contain. And... Yeah, anyway, he's never went for a cloaky bot switch or a shield bot switch. And it looks like Anarchid very slowly trying to take out what he can... Does have the Singularity Reactor up, is starting to get the Silencer up again. Honestly, I just don't... Uh. Anyway, I don't know why he's wasting all that much time, but... No, it looks like he is definitely just hanging out outside of Lord Muff's base, making sure Lord Muff can't do anything to get in the way of this here Silencer. Because bear in mind, Silencers take... They take, as you can see in the description, three minutes to build. And they use 18 middle of a second, that doesn't matter as much. It takes three minutes to build, and Saiyans are coming in. Anarchid is very slowly taking out Lord Muff's base, and I think Lord Muff might just surrender at this point, rather than waiting for the inevitable. But the inevitable is coming! I mean, there's nothing that Lord Muff has built that would be able to get rid of these forces just in a hurry. And there we go, Lord Muff has surrendered, depriving Anarchid of his ability to build up a silencer, and then from that point, nuke Lord Muff. Seriously, what the heck was that? I... I... Wow. Well, I think that's as good a note as any on to end the night. Admittedly, a bit of a anticlimactic match. But still, that... That... That, I think, will be it for me tonight, folks. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, and thank you for watching, and have a good night, everybody. Seriously, what the heck was with that?